Welcome to the tutorial series where we're going to be teaching you how to build this tent. So I've nicknamed this tent the Pentamid. Uh, it's made out of a 20 denier sil nylon. It's 1.1 ounce xenon fabric from Dutchware gear. Um, we'll give you a little tour of it. So do you want to come over here, my wonderful camera person? Um, so it's a pentagonal based structure. So it is five sided. It has five main pegs and there's also a back guy line as well. Uh, it's made out of a very efficient use of fabric. Come around, we'll show you the door. Um, so it's got one seam down the back and then these two side seams on it, and that allows you to get a really nice square area. It has a zipperless design. So I'll show you, it's got a little hook in here. Can we get a close up of the hook? Um, and then this thing, you just grab the two bits and unhook it. Zipperless, so there's no zippers to fail. It rolls up. It's uh, pretty spacious on the inside. It's easily come in close so we can get a view of me actually sitting in it. Um, it's definitely high enough to sit in. I've also got some guy out points and some internal attachments. But it's plenty big enough to lie down, stretch around. Most importantly, it weighs 365 grams, fully seam sealed. Pass me the camera and I'll just have a show of what it looks like from the inside. So. There's some attachment points to hook gear onto. There's an attachment point up at the top, some reinforcing. So this video series is uh, quite long and the beginning of the series really focuses on designing the tent because although uh, I have designed this and the plans will be available for you to use, I really encourage you to modify the designs um, to make them right for you. This video series is going to start right at the very beginning where I don't even know what the tent's going to look like yet and I'm designing the tent and drawing it so we'll take you through all of that um, but you can skip ahead and just use this design if you want to go with it. Um, I hope you enjoy. I will put all of the materials somewhere um, probably in the description and also check out our backpack series if you want to know how to make a sweet backpack. So we are designing the new tarp mid tent based off our trusty uh, Six Moons Designs Luna Solo. As you can see, go on let me have a little bit of videoing time then. As you can see, this is how you go about designing a tent with lots of string, preferably another tent to start your things out. Now you may have noticed some differences. Uh, we're still not 100% sure on all the angles. Currently we're thinking that we want to move this apex inwards uh so translate it inwards a little bit um we'll get back to you it's really important uh finn you want to visualize inside it uh it's really important when you're watching these videos and using them that you um feel free to make changes to the designs yourself like there's no reason you can't make it bigger or smaller if you're a bigger or a smaller person uh etc a few minor tweaks uh come close because i think it's going to be difficult to hear finn so this was brought 15, five centimeters, maybe not that close. This was brought five centimeters lower um, just because the whole thing was feeling quite high. And the fact is when the tent is pitched, it's going to all go up. Uh, we spent quite a long time thinking about changes to the door, but we decided to go with the original plan. So we were thinking about some crazy no door designs and just sort of flipping the stuff up. But we think we're going to stick with that. This was the original height of this, uh, where the peak is, but after... Having tested getting in and out, I'll show you, uh, through this bit, that's quite tight to get in and out of. So I think we're going to take this up probably to like only like five, this is 30 centimetres, I'll probably take it to 10 centimetres uh, instead of that. Um, so yeah, I will show you the CAD designing stages next, because I think it's important to show you how you actually draw from a 3D design to a 2D design uh, so that you can make those changes for your own tent. If you're wondering about this super cool orange uh, trekking pole that is custom spray painted by myself. This is the CAD design that Finley has made on some fancy pantsy uh, studio editor. Finley is a first class engineer yes, uh, I am. studying at Durham at the moment. So this is the CAD model. It's SolidWorks which I've used but there are lots of other free alternatives that could also get a very similar approach. I mean the model itself isn't particularly complicated, it's just a flat 2D drawing and then a loft up to a point. Okie dokie. So, 
what we're going to do now is the basic numbers that are important. So just go to a top-down view for me here, Finn. So the main aspect of this whole build is this square here. Can we lose this box? Yeah. Main aspect of this build is this square here. And so there are some key numbers in our dimensions, basically. So we know this is about 120 centimeters. This is 275 centimeters. And the height is 115 centimeters. And this peak comes out 50 centimeters away from this center line in the middle. And this apex is in the middle of these two points. And then from those numbers, Finley's built a, uh, you know, parameterized thing and you basically put in this dimension this dimension this dimension the height and then it spits out the model for you and then we're going to use this model and then he'll be able to extract the lengths of for instance this line because i'll need to know the length of this line so instead of having to calculate it all finley will take those parameters and then he can just use the measuring tool to measure this line and then i will use those measurements and some euclidean geometry things and we will then convert this to a 2d design Okie dokie, so welcome to the CAD program I used to draw them. This is called 2D Design. Would totally not recommend it. It's a dodgy piece of software. But unfortunately, I had to use it in school many, many years ago, and I know how to use it, and it's just faster for me to use this than to learn a good piece of CAD software. So use a good piece of software. Don't use 2D Design, but the principles will apply. So the first thing we're going to start off with is drawing the large back triangular panel which I know off the top of my head is 275 centimeters long, and I want that to be at a zero angle. And we're gonna put in the grid lock. So that is gonna be the main back panel. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking now because we'll speed up the video, but you'll see what I'm doing, which is basically drawing all the panels connected together along their seam lines. And then once you've got that, I'll do some talking and explain how the next step goes. So. Enjoy the speed up. Okay, what's the next length, Finn? Uh, This is it drawn out now uh, in the splat in the sort of flattened thing. You can see the large uh, back thing here. This makes up the, these three sides make up the square at the 120, 275 dimensions. Uh, we don't need that line in there anymore. Uh, this is just a center line to help me guide my making. Um, these, this is the front pan. This is a door. This is the other door. This is the overlap flap. Overlap flap. Um, yeah, so the next stage of the design is going to be to translate this into, so this is what we want, ideally, but obviously we're going to need more things if we're going to actually sew it. So the first thing to do is work out how we're going to draw it on the, uh, fabric. So my current plan is to, uh, have this as being a seam and then there'll be a piece of fabric which takes up you know this will hopefully be mostly one piece of fabric and then we'll maybe have to chop off like a line here and that will be a second piece of fabric then we will need to add all of our seam allowances so we're going to need to add two centimeters of seam allowance around the outside of the whole thing plus a bunch of seam allowance here because this door flap line is going to need to be sewn into this uh, flat bit here. So next up is to translate it into a more realistic form with seam allowance.
I've marked out the pattern onto a piece of paper and now I'm going to make a paper model just to check I'm happy with, uh, not so much happy with the design, but check that I'm happy with the fact that I've transferred it from computer onto paper correctly or it's designed correctly. All um, cut and taped together. Now it's time to get some origami going. Here it is, the 1 to 10 scale model of what I am dubbing the Pentamid, inspired by the uh, Z-Pax naming scheme. Looking pretty sweet, I think. I've already uh, decided on a few things. I've realized I've put the door flap here on the wrong side. I actually want this to be the door. And currently this side here is the door, so this is the extra flappy bit of material that will cover the thing. So that needs to be switched onto that side. I think that's as simple as just mirroring the whole design. Top down, looking like the square shape we want. If I push it a little bit, that's all looking good. I'm also going to redesign the uh, seam allowance along this bit here because there was a really flappy uh, little bit here. What I'm realizing is actually much harder to design and pattern a tent than it is to design and pattern a backpack. Um, there's a lot more stuff to think about. So. Uh, Definitely pattern your own backpack, but uh, really make sure you've thought about with a tent. But I'm quite happy with the way these seams have turned out. Um, I've realized this is almost a two meter long seam. It's really nice. There's only one, two, three major seams um, on this tent. So that's cool. I'm doing something very important here, which is I am dialing in my seam allowance for three main seams. Now I'm going to be trying a fancy new seam, which is a Fells French steam. And because I've never done this seam before, I need to do some seam allowance. So I've done this practice, I got it too big. This practice, I got it too small. Hopefully this 25 mil seam allowance should be the Goldilocks zone. So I'm going to show you how to do this particular stitch. Uh, what you, I've got here is I've got the outsides of my fabric marked with an X and the inside of my fabric, I've marked a 25 mil line away from this straight edge. Fabric goes the different way round from normal. So outside to outside, or the insides are touching each other and the outsides are actually on the outside. I'm just gonna run a line of stitch along following the edge marking on my sewing machine, which is three arbitrary sewing machine units. This is why I have to dial it in because it's not in, this machine's so old it does not even in imperial units. First line stitched along whatever my number three marking was. Let's measure it so you can follow along. I suggest you tune this seam allowance and your plans relative to this. I mean, you could just use mine and stitch the thing at nine millimeters. So then you turn your fabric around like this. Uh, so this you're now on the inside, pull it apart, line this up so that the seam is right on the fold. And then I'm going to run the stitching along the 25 millimeter line I marked earlier. There we go, stitched along the 25 mil line. Now, this is how, this will just be regular French seam like that. And it's got no nasty edge. It's all smooth on the inside. So that's what makes it fancier. But then the next stage is to flip it over and just fell down this French bit like we would on a normal felt seam but this time it's got a smooth edge. That is the finished seam. So at this point I decided I wanted to change the apex design. So instead of having a single overlapping flap, I've decided to go for a more symmetrical design. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me drawing it, but I will recreate for you now the uh, footage. So you have complete, complete information. So let's go over to the laptop.
a quick walkthrough of the changes. So I took the original design, uh, then I added in these symmetrical flaps here. So this line is coming off at the same angle from here. So this angle and this angle are the same. Uh, that makes the door flat, and I took it down 30 centimeters, I believe. Then I split it in half just like before, perimetered the whole thing, and then I spent quite a lot of time drawing up some really nice plans in all color. So essentially, the blue is the construction lines, um, orange is the cut lines, and black are the fold lines and stitch lines. Actually, just stitch lines. Um, I'll post detailed pictures of the plans. This is what it looks like when you cut it out. Um, and there will be a description, probably a link to a OneDrive folder. That is the main big two panels all marked up. That took me absolutely ages. I think I started at three and now it's four. Seven, I mean, it took me four hours and it started at three and now it's seven. Um, I'm gonna go lay the whole thing out in the garden now just to give it like a view over because I haven't actually like being able to see what it looks like because it's so massive it was really hard to mark out something this big much harder than a small thing not not that difficult like it's just you've got to be time careful especially if you only get one shot of doing it you've just got to take your time measure three times mark twice cut once um so yeah i'm going to leave the other two sort of triangle panels for tomorrow to mark up and i think i'll probably cut at least this off so it's just an easier piece of fabric to work with and then i'll mark up the other two panels good day's work so here it is all laid out, looks pretty good, got plenty of extra fabric left, I think I've got an extra three meters left. Um, it looks, not nothing is obviously ain't drawn incorrectly, um, I'll draw the other two bits tomorrow morning, pretty happy. Welcome to day two of the building process, so this morning I'm going to cut out what I marked out yesterday. Then I'm probably going to mark the centroids of the side panels um, because they are important for where the tie-ups are going to be. Um, and then we'll get on to marking up the other two big triangular panels or small triangular panels. Cut it all out now. It's time to add in the um, mark the point where the tie-ups going to be. So the tie-ups going to be attached to all these side panels, which are here. And then this point here is the centroid. Let me scroll along a little bit for you. This point here is the centroid of this big triangle here, which is the side panel. So that's just found from taking the uh, corner of the triangle to the midpoint, and then you do that for all three, and then the, they should all intersect at one point there. And then I've marked it, what it should look like here with that little circle, taking some measurements. Um, now I'm just going to transfer these centroids onto the pattern itself so I know where to put the tie-outs. Fantastic, the side panels are all cut out. It's time to make some reinforcements. So what I'm going to do is draw around an appropriately sized dinner plate. This one is 25, 26, 25, 26 centimeters, uh, and then I'm going to draw around that and then I'm going to use this as the reinforcement for these side panels. This is the small side panel, but uh, we're going to need quite a few of these, but we're going to start with one and do these two corners first. Quick advice how to find the center of a circle like this. What you do, you Right, draw a circle and then you place, use a square. You place the square anywhere on the circle with the corner of the square um, somewhere on the circumference. And then you draw two dots where the intersection between the edges and the circumference is. And you draw a line between those two dots. Because it's at 90 degrees, it guarantees that that line is a diameter of the circle. And then if you do that a second time by rotating into another position, you'll then draw another unique diameter, and then your two diameters guaranteed to intersect at the center. You can do it a third time to check if you really want.
just marking the segment of the circle for this broad corner reinforcement. There we go, two reinforcement patches uh, cut out, all lined up, looking beautiful. Now we've got to sew them on, so the plan is it's just going to be a curved seam, uh, no zigzag, nothing like that. I'm just going to leave the edges raw on the these attachment bits because I, mean, I don't think this fabric particularly is fray, so I think that's going to be fine. Uh, I'm just going to stitch all the way around using probably a decent stitch length, maybe. I'm not exactly sure, maybe like eight stitches per inch. Um, Got to think about the orientation because we want it to these to be on the inside of the tent. We don't want these on the outside. It'd be a bit ugly otherwise. So I've decided to pin these uh, onto this. I don't normally use pins, but um, because there's no like edge to follow or anything, I guess I could have drawn an edge, but there would be more pen marks, or whatever. Um, so now I'm going to go take the whole setup down into the um, into the workshop and just run these lines of stitching around the corners. Oh, with regards to orientation. You want to put the sides of these with less lines. Unfortunately, this one had lines on both sides. Um, you want to put the light uh, facing upwards because that's this is going to be the inside of the tent. And then you want to tack them face onto the side with all the lines on because we want these lines to be on the inside of the tent as well. So let's go to the workshop. Now I'm sewing the first reinforcement to the small triangle. I've pinned up the remaining two corners that we can uh, reinforce before it all comes together. Uh, these are the ones that are about 89 degrees and they're the ones just at the like that will form the two doors because they the other two corners we can't do at the moment because they have been intersected with seams. So I'm going to sew these up and then I think we'll move on to the tie out reinforcements. Just marked up a pair of smaller circles. These are going to be the reinforcements at the centroids for the um, guy lines. They're, these are about 16 centimeters diameter. This one, which was the one we're using for the corner reinforcements, is bigger. I can't remember what I said it was earlier, 20 something. So we're going to cut these out and then sew them to the really big pieces of fabric where we marked specially earlier. Setting up, time to sew the reinforcement to the big panel. Things all went a bit crazy on that first one. I'm actually not very happy with how it turned out. So this is why it's a tutorial. I guess I'm doing things first so you don't make a mistake. This time I've used the bowl to trace out the line that I'm going to be um, sewing around this time. So hopefully this time it won't skew so much because basically what happened then is that I sewed all the way around. When I got back to the beginning, the two didn't quite line up. So it looks pretty messy. 
Um, I hope it won't impact the structure and integrity of the tent too much. I don't think it will. So, but this time, new technique. Let's uh, let's make it work.